click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russ here coming with another fantastic chemistry video and today I'm going to talk about reactive intermediates, the inductive effect. Now you've already heard of the induction effect or the inductive effect. We just called it polarizing. We said it was polarizability or being polarized or a bond polarization. Essentially, it's a difference in electronegativity. Now, in this particular ion, which I'm going to draw now as a expanded formula, here's our central carbon, and here are the carbons that are all around it. Now, you've been taught, and this is correct, that all carbon atoms would have the same electronegativity. But now, carbon atoms are neutral, and the central carbon here is not neutral, so it's not an atom, it's an ion. It's a cation, to be more specific. And cations are electron deficient. Remember, it's true. Electronegativity is the attractions of electrons due to, to, uh, through a bond to the more electronegative atom due to the higher electronegativity. Electronegativity is based on atomic size. The smaller you are in general, the more electronegative you are. Because you, you have your electrons, your bonding electrons, are closer to your nucleus, which can pull the electrons in. Okay? Cations are smaller than anions. Cations are smaller than anions in general. So this carbon cation has an atomic radius that is smaller than its neutral counterparts. Therefore, this carbon atom in the center is more electronegative. It has more affinity for the bond electrons than the neutral carbons do. So it's going to draw electron density through the sigma system. And we draw it like this. We draw a little... Um, arrowheads on the bonds to show that the electron density in those bonds is being drawn towards the central carbon because the central carbon is more electronegative because it's electron deficient therefore it's a little bit smaller in atomic radius therefore the bond uh, electrons are held closer to the nucleus which is the positive charge therefore the electrons are being pulled in and now on the atoms that are further away we only draw one arrowhead per bond to indicate that the inductive effect gets weaker over, over bonds. In fact, it's three bonds maximum the inductive effect is useful for. So here, one bond, maximum effect is from the first bond. That's where you see your maximum effect. As you get two bonds away from the carbocation, so these hydrogens are all two bonds away, the effect gets less. Now, it's still an effect. It's, you can still sense it. You can still measure it. You can still see the consequences of it. Um, but it gets weaker over three bonds. So over two bonds, it's weak. Over three bonds, it's even weaker. And over four bonds, you can't really see the difference. You can't really see the effects. So what is the overall effect of this induction effect, this movement of electrons towards the central carbocation? The hydrogens become delta positive. It's spreading the electron density, or sorry, the electron deficiency across all the atoms within three bonds, including the carbons. And this plus charge, this cation, will get a little bit more stable because it's now able to find electron density from its surroundings. So now we all know that tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary and primary in, in methyl. And this is one of the reasons. The other reason is hyperconjugation. Induction is the other reason. The carbocation can pull electron, electron density from its neighbors, which means that this carbocation is slightly less attractive to a nucleophile. Slightly less attractive because now the plus charge is being distributed out and spread over a larger area or volume. Larger volume is more correct, I would think. It's being spread over a larger volume, therefore the, car the cation itself is less attractive. There's no central point of positive charge. Unlike in a primary cation where the central point of positive charge is much larger. The, the positive charge at that one position is much larger because primary, for example, here's a primary cation, here's a, and this is the inductive effect, so now it's only got here, so it only has one alkyl group to draw from and two hydrogens. Well, you guys know that hydrogen only has one electron to pull, so it's not really going to be that helpful in terms of stability to this carbocation. So this carbocation is more reactive than this one. This one has 
the electron density from three alkyl groups. This one only has it from one and two little hydrogens. Not going to help it very much. All right, guys, now if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and slap that like button. It really does help YouTube's algorithm let people know that I'm doing a good job and other students may find these videos helpful. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. It really does help me out as a creator when you guys do that. And if you could, throw a comment down below. Let me know the kind of problems you're working with in organic chemistry. Maybe I can make a video just for you. Now with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbetts at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.